So, um, Susan and Greg, uh, there is a fair amount of information that we receive in the packet, uh, which I think all the trustees should have. Um, but do you have any uh, updated information for us tonight or any additional information? Um, Carolyn had sent an email requesting some additional information. I sent you my response to her first batch of questions, so you all should have gotten that by email. Then she sent another question on Friday, and we pulled some material from our uh, financial software to answer the questions. Um, and so you have that as a packet at your table. I, I don't find it particularly useful information, but uh, you have that in case that is useful to you. Um, I did want to express my appreciation to Greg Pritz for this budget packet that he put together with a really substantial amount of additional information for you all. He, it took kind of a lot of time and a lot of thought, and I think he did an outstanding job. And I just wanted to express my appreciation, and I hope that he does the same way that you will express yours as well. Um, Greg is not going to do a presentation tonight. He is just available to answer your questions. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. I did appreciate having this ahead of time and going through this, looking at the background information. And when did you get your packet? Um, I don't know. Friday. 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 Was, is that when you got yours, Dennis? Or do you know? Yeah, well, I, I, I think I saw it Saturday morning. So. Oh. I have to leave. I saw the guys outside in our van. Oh. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, once in a while. Just a, just a, of interest to is a pie chart seeing where our taxes come from or where our revenue comes from. Um, I think it was interesting that our investment income is now matches the replacement taxes that we get. Um, not neither one of them is a huge amount, but just that it was really interesting. Um, graphs and charts, uh, giving us some information about our tax rate, and uh, well, I won't go through it all right now, but. Um, Hopefully you've all had a chance to go through the background information that was presented with the packet. So I mean, it, it's uh, nearly 30 pages long. Actually, it's more than 30 pages long um, of background information before we get to the budget itself in our packet. So um, unless there's some preliminary questions. I have yes. some before we move forward. All right. So you're reviewing the um, budget packet we just received, correct? Uh, the one that was delivered to us, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, let me pull that. Um, it started off with some very detailed explanations, and I wanted to ask a few questions about that. Let's see. <coughs> Okay. 
just one question. Yes. How are we going to go about? I think what we'll do. Forward with I think what we did last year is uh, look at each section, and uh, we can look at revenue first of all. That's pretty straightforward. And then we'll look at each major division. Um, look at salaries, uh, operating expenditures, um, the different breakdowns that we see here, and see if there's any. Um, you know, points that we have questions about, uh, or comments that we'd like to make during each one of those sections. Okay. All right. Any okay, other, my first thoughts on that? Well, let me just finish asking you any questions. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, or? No. So, which part are we going to start with? Uh, revenue. The revenue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Carolyn, what was your question? Um, I have a few regarding the um, covered pages of information. Um, it started by explaining the. Um, strategic plan and um, it mentioned including increasing our interior signage um, um, and then it goes on testing workflow at the desks. Um, question, I didn't see any information explaining the cost to increase interior signage. What are our plans for that? It is one of the projects in the strategic plan, but we don't have a quote for it at this time, so we just budgeted, um, I don't remember what the exact amount well, of money was. Well, that's my question. Be. I asked specifically if well, you could provide us with the cost for our plans uh, on working with the strategic plan this year. So do we have a total budget cost that you're assigning to all of these? Obviously, I don't. Right. I mean, well, how can we approve a budget for strategic planning if we don't know the costs associated with it? Would and be. it's something we should discuss because I think there are other options to obtain the items that you're probably interested. Well, in you know, getting. as soon as we uh, decide, we're going to put up some signs. As soon as well, we've we already discussed this at length, and it's also in her well, other strategic planning recap. We, just, we decided in the strategic, strategic plan that we needed more signs, that people were somewhat confused when they came in. Okay, and that's not more signs. Can I finish no, 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 You know, no, I have the floor. I don't need your no. explanation. I need hers. Well, Please, I can't take all these interruptions. Every time I come to a board meeting, whatever you want to put. I just want to speak to Susan. Well, I'm I trying to reach her for weeks. That um, I'm and what I'm leading to, to is, you can't help me. What I'm leading to well, is the strategic plan proposal. I think I can, actually. Well, no, you can't, which we already received. And in it, you <coughs> list all the items for the 2019-20 year. And I know we have like four of them. I'm just looking at We have four of those items here, Susan. How are we going to handle all the other ones that aren't in here? Are they excluded now? This, I, I put at the beginning of this some of the highlights of what we're going to be trying to accomplish this year. Mm -hmm. Anything that is over a certain price will be coming to the board for their approval at the time. Okay, but my point is the strategic plan for 2019-20, we received it from you in February. You approved it in February. Okay. And it's has extremely, it. yes, it's extremely detailed, but at that time you also couldn't tell us the cost of, that would be involved in terms of whether it's staffing time or purchasing. And I would think now that we're ready to review our budget, we could have some dollar amounts. You've already talked about wanting those, um, those hanging things inside the library and outside to advertise your programs. I mean, didn't you already pursue that? And we just nixed okay, it. I don't want to review the strategic plan tonight. I want a lot you to review in We this need to know what you plan on charging the library for the strategic plan. Yeah, Carolyn, well, if we are going all. to, yeah, right. And if I can't approve a budget. There's only one item without a mouth. Carolyn, well, if we're going to purchase anything. something, it'll come before the board. If we're buying signage, that's something we'll discuss later. We don't. We know have exactly a budget for. Be some $8 million, and we can't justify what we're using it for. We're just going to approve it later. We don't have every uh, single can't expense planned out. Yeah. It should be. This is a well, budget plan. You can't plan always do that. You can't always They've plan been planning exactly this budget. what yes, you every can. expense They've been be planning for six time. months. We never have anything. Can I ask a good question? No, please don't, because uh, then I can't no. get past well, my Well, then question. can you just get your stuff rolling well, so we can get this meeting done so I'm not here until 10? Well, then resign. I'm not resigning until okay, you resign, bitch. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. 
Forgive me. Aren't you I the most mean. professional? Yes, I am. Here. And I didn't mean it. I'm oh, sorry. Please. I did mean please. it, actually, but I'm sorry I said it because I should have. Okay, I, I have a hard time trying to figure out. Yes, exactly. A little control would be nice. Yes, so you I have do. a hard time approving a budget when all we have are paragraphs after paragraphs without any associated costs. So that's why I'm bringing this up. So for strategic planning, when are we going to get that information? When do we need to approve this budget by? Well, we do need to approve the budget. And okay. what we are doing is approving a budgeted amount. But before we make purchases, that will come before the board. So what's the budgeted amount for the 2019-20 strategic work plan? I didn't see it anywhere. Well, it's broken out into the different types of sections. Okay, that's fine. Can I get a copy of that? Well, I mean, you have the budget itself. No, I want a, a breakout of the cost for the strategic work plan for 2019-20. I most, just want a copy of it. Most of these items do not have a significant they budget. They do. Do you want me to highlight the ones that do? Most of these items do not have Doesn't a Doesn't matter. Carol, what you're spending money on, I need to be aware of. And I'm asking you. I do not want to spend this entire meeting being attacked by you. you I'm not attacking you. I'm asking for information that I expect to receive right. like an attack. Well, it's not. You, you know, it's, all it's, un your voice. it's unfortunate that you and I work in different arenas <laughs> where in my world, this is all expected. Here, it sounds like I'm so demanding, we but when we review budgets... Here we go again. What's that got to do with the, what we're talking about? Because she feels like she's being attacked. Do you mind? Well, I yes, think I any normal person would feel that. Well, I'm that speaking to Susan. Well, please stop. Well, I have to speak to you. You're the director who provided this to us. No one else has I'm giving you the information that I have. Okay, so as far as the strategic work plan, and I did outline items that will have a cost effect associated with them, am I able to get that from you or not? You are not. When, well then I, I suggest we don't approve strategic planning if we don't know the cost. You okay, she suggested it. Okay, next time. All right, I think we're just going to have to move on. Okay, we don't have other questions because... Well, Carolyn, I'm sorry, we're just going to have no, to move on. No, you can't we will never me. get through this meeting. Yeah, we will. If we on uh, page stop four, every please question. stop interrupting me. You get to talk all you want and everyone else. I'm done. Yeah, just because you don't want to hear specifics, I'm sorry. <clears throat> You mentioned the cost of programs are increasing because of the Friends of the Niles Public Library have stopped paying for some expensive programs. Could you tell me how much money we are not getting from them that we expected to receive? I'm not saying we expected to receive. I'm saying in past years we did receive. Exactly. That's what I meant. How we much were they giving us that we're not getting now? Did not ask for that information in advance, and I do not have it at my fingertips. Shakespeare, um, no one has an estimated amount for Shakespeare yeah, or for in my right. hands right now. I do not. Cindy Brownmacher's now. Okay, can I get that from you later? No, no, thank you. Well, and then well, Susan, I guess the liaison, you would know that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is okay. Friends my, liaison, my, don't you know what, that information? Can you tell us? If yeah. I knew, I, she said she's not getting money from them. I wanted to know what they paid in the past. Well, you should know that because you've been the liaison. I don't know the that total amount. Yes. Well, it should be well, the for your sarcastic question, for your sarcastic question, it's not a sarcastic it's question. It's $500 per school if for the bookathon or whatever we have in the summer. If it's $500 per school. Wait, that would have for now? So yeah. many students attend. That's all I know. Are talking about the, the Battle of Books? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, and I don't know Shakespeare. Those are the two things, Battle of Books and Shakespeare. Can I get those costs? from you? It's, I'm sure it's in our monthly from prior. How much it costs? Right. Yeah. Okay, Susan, is it possible for me to get the out. cost of the Shakespeare <laughs> plays that we now have to fund it's and eight hundred and fifty dollars a play. It is our highest attended program and in the past the board the Friends of the Library was paying for it. I believe there are six things scheduled. Don't you, you happen to have that number well, tonight? I have what was budgeted for it. Yeah. Five thousand one hundred dollars. Thank you. And it's for six plays at eight fifty. Um, yes, because I'm trying to figure out what they paid, what their portion was that they, they paid. paid all of it. They did. So they paid fifty one hundred, or is that this year's figure? That's this year. Last year was five thousand nine hundred. Did they pay last year though? No. no. Did they? No. 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 no we took it out of per capita last year. So it's approximately yeah. five thousand. Do we have any? Can I have an extra pen, please? 
So it's so they had six hundred and thirty seven dollars a play if there's eight. No, I okay. think it's eight hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, so maybe it was okay, times so six plays, long. right? Okay, and that's what they pay. And then they and then Susan is five hundred dollars per dollars per school. You're How right. many schools right. participated about? Is that six schools, three thousand? I mean I I don't recall. Five. Five. So maybe twenty five hundred. So this is the money that we're out from terms of the library. And um, well, those are the two examples I gave, yes. Okay, and so that's, but I'm going to take Dodie's 5100 because that's the total cost for this program. And 2500 for the book, the yeah. summer battle of the books. Okay. All right, so that comes to 76. And currently we are receiving 10000 from um, the book sales. So that money would have gone to them. So we're okay now because we're keeping that money and we can pay this ourselves. That's what I said. So we're all right? Okay. That's how I look at it. Well, I didn't know if it was equal. Free. I don't know that it was equal. I didn't see any dollar amount. Okay. Are there any other questions before we turn to revenue? No, that's, those are the only two questions I have. Okay, fine. All right, let's look at page 36 under the revenue section. Um, and um, so it's fairly straightforward, but uh, does anyone have any questions or comments about the revenue section? I have a question if no one else has one. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, and it would need to drag because I believe he's the expert. I'm just trying to figure out to date um, what our cash on hand is. Could you highlight those figures for me, please? Uh, it's on the balance sheet uh, that was distributed in your uh, other package. I think we're right up uh, right around ten million dollars. Okay, I thought I had. Yeah, I I think I wrote down ten. I couldn't understand which figures I should have been calculating, so I had ten or thirteen. So it's really ten. Correct. Yeah, I don't know what the thirteen is. I'm not, I can't remember what I saw. I think it was the liabilities weren't taken out. And um, that's where it was 13 and then it was 10. Okay, so it is 10. All right, perfect. And then um, I did look at our April 30th income statement, which is in our May budget, which we received. And it shows a net surplus of 1,700,000. So I, I'm guessing that would be as of April 30th, because that's what the May budget represents, correct? Um, I think so. Does that include... I don't have it in front of me, so... But normally, the May budget, the budget we received this month, reflects costs up to the last day of the previous month, correct? Yeah, yeah those okay. are as of and through April 30th. Okay, and then... Then the thing that I always need to clarify is the checks that we write after this board approves the check register, is that an additional amount that has to come out of that? No. So it's already... So the way it works, um, we use modified accrual accounting. So everything we're writing a check for has already been um, accounted for in the uh, previous month's income statement. Okay. And they end up on the books as accounts payable. At, at the board meeting, we decide or I should say the board decides to pay those bills uh, as a group and, uh, and at that point then they're released and the following month they're deducted from cash. Okay, so the date on the check doesn't no. indicate when the money comes out. It's already right. come out. Okay, perfect. All right, that was all I had there. Okay, we'll turn to salaries then. Um, salaries again uh, starts on the bottom of page 36 and moves up to the top of uh, page 37. Um, I have just uh, one uh, question myself, and I'll turn it over to other people then. Um, we earlier approved a 3% increase in uh, pay to our employees. Uh, that is 3% total, not to each individual person, but 3%. Um, but I see the budget amount really is just about the same for 2018-19 and 2019-2020. Um, can, you, can you address this? Uh, certainly. Um, so um, we've had some turnover in the past year. 
Uh, typically, uh, we've had some, uh, some of the uh, more experienced librarians and uh, other staff members uh, retiring or leaving us. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because we, in the past, we just didn't see this level of departures. And um, I think it's facilitated to a great degree by uh, IMRF. Uh, providing a, uh, a backstop for them in retirement um, and making making uh, that decision has become easier for some uh, for some employees. What you also see, um, so uh, anyway, what happens is uh, somebody with a lot of experience, let's say 20 or 25 years experience, retires, and when we hire somebody, we hire them lower in the or further back in the uh, salary band. And um, the uh, added bonus is that further back in the salary band implies that they're earlier in their career, which implies that they're younger. And every time we hire somebody who's a little bit younger, what it does is it uh, lowers our um, average census age. The census is important because that is the list of employees who are eligible for health care that we submit to Blue Cross Blue Shield. And the way that their models work, in part, and there's a lot of different parts of their pricing models, um, but the way that it works in part is that the younger a person is, the less maintenance. Kind of like a car. You, know, you drive a car out of the showroom, typically you know, it doesn't need a lot of maintenance until it's a little bit older. So um, uh, when that happens, it causes our rates to, uh, for health care insurance to uh, decrease. This year we had about a 2% overall decrease in our uh, health care rates. Okay, so we'll, we see that later in um, underemployed fringe benefits under mm -hmm. group health, right? Right. So that went down actually about $20,000. Uh, yeah. Like. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. In terms of our budgeted amount. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. All right. Um, okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions about the salary section of the budget? So, so what, could, could you give me a rough estimate of uh, that 3% increase that was going to be in effect? As a uh, well, generally speaking, in the course of a budget year, it's about fifty dollars to $55,000 uh, impact on the, uh, the P&L statement. Yeah, because if you have the turnover, and somebody's making a certain salary that one person can easily leave and then yeah. kind of mm -hmm. cover that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Did I oversimplify or did I miss anything on that? So there's um, there's two parts. We pay let's say we pay about three point three million dollars in uh, in salary on an annual basis. Three percent of that is a hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. But because of the way it's feathered in based on anniversary dates, we experience in a particular budget year for a particular raise program about half of that, fifty to fifty-five thousand yeah. um, dollars. That doesn't mean that we're paying fifty to fifty-five and getting a hundred, because what it does is it pushes up the uh, uh, the starting point for the following year. So. Uh, Whatever we don't see in the current year, we see in we see in the following year. Right. Um, so this is, you know, so normally what I would expect to see is, you know, is an increase of year over year, close to a hundred thousand dollars. And we're not seeing that. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that at all. We're seeing uh, a, a very small increase mm -hmm. of five thousand or so dollars. So it's relatively um, flat given. You know, given the uh, dynamics of, um, of the employment base here. Thanks. Okay, and if there are. Can I ask a couple yeah. of questions? Yes, yeah. so, yeah, so Greg, are you saying then the 2019 20 budget year will start in July? So 54000 will be realized from July to December. July to June. These are fiscal year statements, so it covers so, in 12 months, which is starts in July and ends in June. So what are we missing? What portion of the 100000 are we missing? If we go from July to December... So if, if we have somebody who, let's say, earns um, 
earns a thousand dollars and their three percent raise is thirty dollars okay so the first person gets their thirty dollar raise on the first day of the fiscal year which means that we recognize that person's pay in that fiscal year as one thousand thirty dollars okay mm -hmm. now we have another person let's say that person starts on the last day of the year they start on June 30th or their anniversary is on June 30th okay and they get three percent that person got the same and they're in a thousand dollars that person is now at the same pay level as the first person at one thousand thirty dollars mm -hmm. but because they're at on the last day of the year is when they got their raise only one three hundred and sixty fifth of that thirty dollars is going to hit the current budget. Oh, so it's not that. So on average, okay. On average, what we have, if you take the two circumstances mm -hmm. and the average them together, over a two thousand uh, dollar salary budget, we have basically a fifteen dollar increase that's recognized in that fiscal year. Okay, I understand that. I was just thinking if you start the thirtieth, but you only include what the amount of the raise is received, not the fact for over a year of the yeah, Okay, and then I did have a couple questions. Um, I didn't realize, well, it was brought to my attention that our payroll on Sundays is time and a half, which is something I always knew, but apparently it mustn't be common throughout the area. So, um, Someone mentioned to me, who doesn't live in Nile, that their daughter is thrilled to get a job here because we pay time and a half. So I'm trying to figure out, in today's norm, what what is going on? Everyone doesn't get time and a half on Sunday? I mean, I know we've always looked at other libraries to see what they're doing, but she acted like this was really out of the ordinary. Then I noticed, just for Sundays, our budget's 81000 So is that something that um, we could rethink? That would be a board decision. What do you want? I mean, time and a half for the. It is only time and a half for uh, people that are required to be here for their full time, and then uh, for the four hours that we're open, which are our four busiest hours of the week. Um, we're open four hours on a Sunday for eighty one thousand a year. That's correct. There are a few people that come a little earlier. Or maintenance, wow. security. Those people are here more of that time. Some people actually work a little earlier, but they uh, but they don't get paid the time and a half for the time they come in early. Yeah, I there's, understand there's that. Time for any of that. Um, They're only, it's only time and a half for patron-facing time. Do we think, um, based on the current situation in the state of Illinois, that maybe we want to look a little deeper into some of our costs? I mean, our residents are going to be zapped with all of these taxes that are coming as a library and reviewing our programming and our attendance, is there some way we could redefine maybe some of these costs? I mean, do you think you'd lose employees if they didn't get paid time and a half? I'm sure I would lose some, but you know, you, that's a board decision. Uh, let me add some uh, information about that number, that $81,975. That is the full time and a half. So if you eliminate it, the half, so it was just time, um, you would only take a, a third of that away. Time and a half would take a third away? Yeah. Yeah. So another, let's say it's 90000 because it's easier to divide. The people that work on Sunday would get paid $60,000 regardless. What we're adding to it is 30, half of mm -hmm. what the full time is. So it's time and a half. And that raises it. So. You know, uh, if you can uh, do the math on the fly, um, it's somewhere between, I'd say, twenty-six and twenty-eight thousand dollars that you would save by eliminating time and a half. Well, not eighty-one thousand nine hundred and seventy-five. You would have to close on Sunday to save eighty-one thousand nine hundred and seventy-five. Oh, absolutely, and I'm not sure, you know, <coughs> what what all else takes place on Sundays and where we actually are in cost. I mean, we've got programs, a lot of things. But what I'm saying is we, we don't sit down and really try to reevaluate what we're doing and maybe what other options are there. We just, we're going to just go through this laundry list, vote yes, and it'll be over. 
And I'm trying to say, um, well, you know, Carolyn, if our we want budget to, probably could use a little more review. If, if we want to discuss uh, whether or not we want to pay a time and a half on Sundays, that's something we can do uh, at a later point. I and mean, simply because an amount is budgeted does not mean it has to be sent, spent. But um, if that's something that you know you want to bring up and discuss at a later point, that can be done because that's really sort of a, uh, a personnel decision, not a personnel decision, but a decision regarding how we compensate our staff, and that can be a different discussion. Well, there are many line items that I feel we should be reviewing in this budget process. And don't forget, your budget is what's going to determine your levy, and we don't really have committees form that we could already have been talking about this. I mean, this is one of the thinnest libraries I've ever seen. So if we don't discuss it during budget review time, when are we going to discuss it? There's well, never enough we time. We discuss things throughout the year. No, you need more than just a board meeting two-hour slot. You need yeah, to and really we're, review. We discuss and and may I just finish, may I just complete my thought? If we didn't pay time and a half on Sundays, that doesn't mean there wasn't something else to put in its place. But we never take the time to reevaluate all the possibilities for any of our line items. Mm -hmm. Yes. We actually have done that, and we did vote yeah. on that. Yeah. So that was a board decision, and that was voted on. I, well, I, I, didn't, I don't I, know what year, but it has been mm -hmm. since I've been here that we voted on to have a time and a half for Sundays. And we did look at other, other libraries around, and I don't remember exactly, but I think it was basically like a 50-50. It was some did, some didn't. I can't remember exactly who, but we did analyze it. We did talk about it as a board. So that's all we have to say. Well, what you need to and realize what, what I just wanted to add to that, too, is I don't think it was during the budget process. It was it during the rest of the year. Yes, it and was. it was a number of years ago. Yes, it was. Uh, but we talked about, you know, we, looked, we focused on compensation of our, of our staff at a different board meeting. So, yeah, we can talk about it at later okay. times if that's something uh, the board wants to do. Can I just make one blanket statement so we don't have all this back and forth? The fact of the matter is we're reviewing our budget. Okay, 2019-2020 couldn't be the worst time for the residents in this area. Okay, taxes are through the roof. I mean, everyone, is, half the people are, are, are running out of the state. I think we need to take this budget process more seriously. You want to go line by line and dismiss everything I say or tell me you talked about it five years ago? It has nothing to do with the current status. I think it's important as a board that we convince the residents that we are not living in a bubble and we are aware of what's going on out there. And that's why this budget process is so important to be extended so you do that. Actually, but that's my Carolyn, point. Carolyn, I'd like to see some statistics on that. On what? Well, what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to ask you. But on what you just stated. Well, what did I say? Well, you stated right. that we're living in essentially very terrible times and that it's. Oh my it's God, worse. have you not paid attention to the Kevin, governor? Could you let me finish? That would be great. I appreciate that. I'd like to see some of your statistics on that. I, I just would because I haven't seen uh, anything to state that. Go Niles, to Illinois.gov, it's all there. I haven't seen anything to state that Niles in particular is having any terrible issues. Okay, and regarding our residents, you should take a survey of the homes in this area. Actually, I'd like you to present out. that information to me. because You, you know what, you're a trustee. Here. If you cared about the residents, you would take the time to okay. figure it out. Yeah. Believe yeah. me, it's yeah. happening. Okay, now we're down into the weeds again. Right. You brought right. us there. But see, oh, excuse me. I've written down how much time she's been talking. She's been doing the majority of the talking at this meeting. So it, he's only said maybe two minutes worth. The point was he brings us down by what he says. So I'm asking like questions. Your tone is in bringing us down? I don't know. My so Karen, is where you're Karen, you're in charge here. You're right. So again, some sometimes we have to pull back on certain comments. The bottom line here is is that yes, we're, a third is only a, a, a portion here, but it's a third of this, a third of that. It's just like your bills at your house. Electric goes up, phone goes up, this goes up. You need to know where to pull back, where to tighten. So yes, it's only a third here, but the people running the business, the library, we'll call it here, have to look at all that stuff before they come here. They have to say, what are we going to do to shrink the overall cost that we're going to put down as our final budget line? So that's what needs to happen. We can sit here, as Carolyn said, and argue line by line by line, but it's the sum total 
of all the increases over time that's pushing us to eight and a half million. So that's what it comes down to from the revenue side. The, the, the people that are running the business need to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to run these different projects and I need to estimate. I need to estimate so that I can roll it all up and come up with a budget. I can't set a pie in the sky budget and then come back month after month and say, oh yes, we met the budget. Yes, we met the budget because we over budget year after year after year. Well, what do you want to cut? It's not my job. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You're yes, one it is the board job. This I, I, is our job. I, I told you last year, I gave a number of things that we wanted to cut. That, that I suggested the cut. Right, and the board decided not to do it. Well, we did actually cut so out, what, I think, what do you $100,000 want? out of the budget after your suggestions last year. Gee, yeah. well, thanks. For, thanks for throwing me a bow. I shouldn't have to do that work. It, I, I'm telling you, the library just continues to spend. As I look at the nice newsletter, and you guys produce great stuff. I'm not saying you don't produce great stuff. I'm not saying you don't have great programs. But gosh darn it. Sunflower seed plant, uh, planting, second Saturday breakfast bingo, magic school. What part of this is library? What part of it is library? And it's not the programs. Great programs. Great people running the programs. But you know what? You're asking the taxpayer to pay for all of this, and I think it's wrong. I think it's incorrect. I think it's incorrect because it's, it takes people. When it takes people, it takes pensions. It takes salaries. It takes health benefits. And it takes a lot of money, so it's the combined total of all of these programs, one after one after one. Magical school, Lego club, yoga for kids, great programs. I'm not denying that these aren't great programs. You have great people. You have great people delivering things, and I've told you time and again, take all of these programs, take each individual program, put it in a store across the street somewhere, and then charge. Charge for it to come in. You won't be getting free pizza, free breakfast, free nothing. You'll be charging for it. You know how many people are going to show up? Not a whole lot. These are great programs. Do not get me wrong. And people are at the library are doing great work. Your layout here of all the stuff is a great report. I'm not denying it. But laser cutter basics for vinyl uh, is not a library thing. Making buttons. It's not well, a, a where, library thing. That's where our philosophies are different. That's no, it's not. Because, it's because yes, it is. Because I no, think all not. of those things are. Why? Why, why? why is making buttons a library thing? Because this is growth, this is education. This what? Is making buttons? Yes. Really? And then, yes. And maybe I don't want to pay for that. Dennis, one of those things you mentioned uh, is being done by the garden club. So we aren't paying for but it. But it takes people to organize it here. You at the library need to have somebody organize that in order for it to happen. You need people to register, you have administrative time, and that's a people person. So what is the best process, I mean, for us at another time to come forward with suggestions? Let's talk about programming and let's go through things like this. It would be up to him or somebody of like thinking. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. No, no, but wait, wait, now's wait. not the time. Wait. To, to discuss question. programming. I know. I'd like Now's not the time. It should have been done before. Exactly. Okay. Then it, it is up to you if you want to do that. It's to not bring up to forth, me. To bring forth a question to the board so that we can put it on our agenda and discuss it. This is not the time. That's and it'll be end. five to two on everything. Okay, wait. Well, That's true. Then That's then at I a board can't board. help you on that one. Yeah, I know you can't because you'll be one of the if five. If you are going to be so negative about it, I don't know why you want Create to a toddler t-shirt. Embroider a kitchen towel. Okay, we said we would talk about that. No, I want it on record. I want it on record for all the Silhouette Wednesdays. This is not Folk art right. painting. And I signed up for it. Do you have a motion? Would you like to make well, a motion? No, I, you, you say that I should have time during the meeting to discuss. I don't get up at the beginning of the meeting because people didn't care for that. So this is now in the beginning. This is in the middle of the meeting, and we're talking about it. And I'm saying that we come to the meeting, this, this budget meeting is ill-prepared because we just say we're going to increase the budget by a million dollars. And I think, it's, I think it's inappropriate to do that. Can I just point out that the, the increase in the budget is by and large from 
putting a new roof on yeah. the building. Right? But we put chillers on so many months ago. I would have thought at some point, some point, somebody said, gee, I'm walking on the roof here. Gee, do we think we're going to have to replace this? Dennis, Maybe we need an estimate on what's going to happen. No, we didn't get it. It wasn't discussed at the time. No. What, what do you mean? Stop you? And you know what? I'm, right, again, I'm you. When, when, when I do a budget at my house, if I have to do, and this is any business, just not Dennis at his house, boy, if I have an expenditure, you know what? I don't get extra revenue brought in. You know what? I do cutting. Or what? You know what? I'm not going to the plays. I'm not going to the plays for $650. I'm not going to this for this amount of money. I'm not driving a, a, a van around to deliver books to people. I'm going to make those people come and get the books because we're a library. So those are the things that I would cut out. Those would, the, the, those would be the thinking things that, yeah, I know I have a big expenditure coming down and I should be planning for these big expenditures because I know they're going to happen. There's some smart people here. There's some, you know, the maintenance guy, smart guy. We got a lot of smart people here. The business guy, smart guy. You know, Susan, smart person. And I don't know why, but when we come to the table, we haven't given this some real good thought prior to plopping down a big number and saying, well, this is how we're going to well, cut we're back. We're crying over something that's Well, the thing is, we're not going to do it I don't do it I agree. Now. I, 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 I said my piece. We're not going to do it. Then come back. Right. No, I'm not next good. year's budget. I mean, well, no, we yeah. just budget. at the wrong time. Ne never mind. It's, so right. it's okay. We I, I just want. I said my piece. I'm done. I, and I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you listening. All right. Okay. Can I just make a statement to um, Trustee Olson's question that we should um, discuss these questions or issues at a, at a different time? I want everyone to remember. I have asked that we form committees in the past. One was about programs, one was for finance, and one was personnel. All libraries that get ready to survive have committees. All these discussions, the information comes from all the, the supervisors who have the knowledge, but, excuse me, but you deny that to even happen. You don't want to have committees, no, Karen Diamond is the only person who could approve that. So because the status quo is to just run down this laundry list of budget items and say, yes, that's why we do this. Libraries smaller than Niles have committees. Why can't we do that? We have in the past. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be asking all these questions. Well, I'm saying we desperately need to bring committees back. Okay. And we need the input of our staff. We don't need Susan to have to, and to have to answer all these questions when we have all these professionals in their areas of expertise I, I think we're getting a little far afield from So I would matters. like you to consider committees so we can start to better review our spending. Why don't we talk about right, the we'll committee do that on the Wednesday first when we have an actual meeting. Year. Oh, their new, uh, new fiscal year. Did you have a uh, comment about uh, I just have a comment about the committees. When we did have committees in the past, what the committees are supposed to then present their um, their decision, mm -hmm. and then everyone wanted to talk about it, and they overrode the decision. Right. That's what's happened with that's that. That's not what the committee that is supposed what, to be. Yes, it that's is. not my purpose. The committee is to gather information okay. and right. bring so it I'm back. Just saying, yep. That's okay, my okay. Well, that that's we can talk about this Wednesday. We, talk, we do too much talking and we have no action. Turn, turn the next section of the budget. Can we put it on as a line item then for, for, the, for the meeting on Wednesday? You mean an agenda item? Yeah, an agenda item. Uh, committees? Uh, to, sure. Uh, to like to add an agenda item. Well, could it be? You can add it as a discussion. Okay. okay. Discuss. Well, let's do that. Okay. All right. Um, we'll discuss it more. All right, let's turn to page 37, to the budget. our next section. We are. This is um, all part of the budget. It's material. Let's, uh, does anyone have questions about materials or the next one, library operating expenditures? These are two uh, relatively small sections. Does anyone have any questions about materials or operating expenditures? All right, now let's turn to page 38. Under 38, we have general and administrative. Um, any questions or about general and administrative? Or for that matter, vehicle operation. That's very small. We, so. we should get rid of the vehicle and and have the schools that need the books come in and get it. Uh, you know, when I needed things for my family, for my parents, I went and got them. 
I went and got them. We are a library. We are not a delivery service. And this is the 21st century. Yeah, you know what? You're taking taxpayer money for it. It's not free. May I say something? It's not that? free. No, I'm not finished yet. All right. The, the van is an expense. A big outlay of cash for the van. Then you got to paint it, make it look nice. Then you got to have a person to drive that van. Again, person, salary, benefits, health benefits. Time off. So that's a large portion of it. Uh, you know, I know that there's people that reside at these different uh, uh, centers for, for the aged uh, because my parents were in both, uh, were in those uh, facilities, and there are people there that help run uh, a lot of programs, get reading material. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hey, uh, could you drop it off for me? Uh, please uh, send me a pizza. No, it's, it should be, I will stop by, pick up a box of books, and I will, I, I will bring it to be responsible for bringing it back. It's, it's, it is uh, the 21st century, but you know, there are some people that think everything should be given to them for free. And it's not free because it's uh, eight and a half million. Well, I forgot the total revenue and taxes. It's only seven million something. But, uh, you know, it's not free. Not free. Sorry, you were going to say something? Yeah, I just, it's, it's to this point, um, really the way the board makes the decision, uh, as far as I understand it, and, and I'm not totally yeah. against it, no, I, mean, I, mean, yeah. I think uh, we should follow a procedure where uh, someone makes a, a motion yeah. to, if you want to delete, yeah. get rid of the vehicle, you should make a motion. Yeah. State your case. Yeah. Somebody should second it, and then we should go around the vote and make yeah. a decision. No, I think that, 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 I think that I think that's a, a great process. I, I believe uh, my friend Karen Diamond asked questions about: Do we have any comments about this particular area? And so that was my comment. Sure. So, what so I'm suggesting. You, okay. you, so I, I will bring it up in the future. We will sit down and talk about it, and then we will vote five. Why well, I mean, we do it? We can do it now. No, we're not going to do it now. This is the budget meeting. Come on, let's get with it. Let's stick with Can the plan. Can I ask a, qu one, a question on that same subject? So, so I'm vehicle? looking on so the vehicle. vehicle. Yes. I'm so we have to because it's not time for it. We can discuss it at another time and bring it up. It's not part of a, a thing. Uh, yes, um, I just have to point out that if you look at the exhibit out here of the history of the library, we have a bookmobile going back to the same time that the library building was built because the Board of Trustees always knew that not everyone would be able to get to the library. That's like 1965. That is a history of delivering materials to the district. We no longer have the bookmobile. Many people would love nothing more than to have a, be a bookmobile come when back. We used to have branches. We don't have branches anymore. Now we're down to one tiny little van that goes around to homebound people and people in the nursing Schools. homes, and we deliver some materials to teachers if they're teaching on a particular topic, and we have materials on that topic, we deliver things to them. I, I see that as a huge asset of the library for really a very low cost. That The people delivering, it's like a person and a half. Everything is a low cost. I tell you, everything is a low cost, but when you add them all up, uh, and, and when I was much younger, and we, when we weren't thinking about free for everything, I rode my bike two miles to get to the public library on Clark Street. And so I rode my bicycle two miles to get to Clark Street. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that can take a free bus to get to this library. When I was a child in Chicago, on the south side, the closest library was over 10 miles from my house. I depended on the bookmobile. Thank you. I'm just saying it's it's if you're looking for places to cut, and as a is a is somebody that's running the library and as the business manager, again, these are things that I offer for people to cut and to look at. Again, I fully realize I am not running the library. And I certainly won't get the vote, you know, to to, to make that change. So I I bring these items up just to make it apparent to folks on the video and, and, and folks in the room that you know things aren't free. Yes, it's a small cost, and uh, you know, but you know, it was a small cost for 
the time and a half, and it's a small cost for the van, and it's a small cost. There's a lot of small costs that all add up. So, I, you know, again, sorry for being so verbose. Can I make a statement, please? Um, I have a concern. Um, I realize that this board doesn't function with the mindset that we should be trying to review and maybe decrease spending. Excuse well, me. What I'm concerned I about is you I, should. That's not a valid statement. You know, would you, what you please mean the board doesn't think of? You can't speak of, for all of us, Carolyn. You know, really. This, okay, if you this, let me finish my no, statement. No, that sentence was it. What I'm concerned about is when we talk Excuse. about decreasing, everyone becomes offensive. And Susan, I just want to make sure that the message we're sending to our staff is certainly not one that the administration nor this board takes lightly the cost to our residents to support this library. And yes, while people have just said they're not interested in cutting or decreasing, we should always be interested in reviewing our costs because you can always do something better for less money. But if our staff is going to feel that they're not interested in decreasing because this becomes a battle, then we're not presenting this budget process correctly. Can That's I, what I have to say. Can I yes, make a statement? Yes, if somebody wants to bring up a specific part in this budget, besides just the vehicle which you mentioned, you know, like line items, like you always suggest, why don't you do that? Rather than going on and on and on about stuff that's not really the budget. If we're here to discuss the budget, let's please discuss the budget. All right, let's turn to the next section now. Uh, All right, I had a benefits. question. I think you're moving a little too fast for me. I apologize. Did we pass up passports? Not yet. That's a revenue item. Okay. So, um, was it from the last? I have it on. I think I'm looking at a different sheet. Which page are you on? Oh, you know what I'm using? I'm using your breakdown of explanations, and you guys are going by something different. We're going by the one we got in our mailbox. Oh, I have 10,000 different things in the mailbox. But what I wanted to say is, well, I can ask about passports later, but where are we in terms of the breakdown in the budget? Are we in materials, operating expenses? We're on page 38, uh, bottom of page 38, employee fringe benefits. So we already passed today, operating expenditures? Um, we talked about that, yes. That okay, can I things. bring something up about uh, operating expenditures? What is it? Um, under professional development, I noticed that, and I, and I understand some years we have a PLA and others we don't. So this year our professional development is 54000 and And um, I, I know we brought this up once before, and the question was, instead of having our employees travel to different states to participate, could this be um, provided over the internet, or do they have video conferencing for some of these um, uh, workshops? So has anyone looked into that any further? Because seriously, there's a cost involved with this, but to have some of our key employees have to travel, I'd rather see them here in our library district with all of our strategic planning that we'd like to get going. And maybe the 54000 could be spent to actually benefit the library in some other ways. So have we heard if, you know, I mean, ILA, PLA, they're huge. Yeah. Isn't, yeah. isn't the ALA uh, in Chicago? In Chicago this year, this year isn't it? Uh, for this fiscal year, yes, it so, will be. And yes. that's yes. why that's yes. higher, because it's in yes. Chicago, right? No, it's higher because 54000 is for Tennessee, right? Yes. The PLA, the <laughs> a portion of that. Yeah, PLA. A portion of that is for webinars, local uh, professional development events. It covers a lot. Um, it is for PLA. It also is to cover registration for the Chicago conference for a number of people to attend since it's here and they won't have to travel. Um, you know, a lot of people would like to go to PLA. I cut the number of people that were going in half. If the board would like to. You know, you can say how much we're allowed to spend in this category, and we will keep to the amount of money that that you think we should spend. There is no way to attend these <coughs> conferences remotely, though. So they they are not interested in doing that at all in 2019. Well, it's up to the conferences whether or not they. I know. I noticed that you can 
actually go to their archive website for conferences. But is that archive must mean after the fact? Okay. And you're able to view the um, conferences? You, is can't, that? you can't view them, but there are often handouts that are on the archive. So the, and some of the people that don't attend the conference do end up looking at the handouts. The people that go come and talk about what they heard and they write up their notes and they pass out the handouts. What about the workshops? Are those available to your staff after the fact? What do you mean by workshops? Well, when you go to PLA, um, I think that's, that's what I went to. I yeah. scheduled all you went, these you went conferences. To ALA. ALA. You, went to, okay. you went to sessions at ALA. So those sessions, are those available to your staff after? So they, they just disappear. They don't videotape them or anything. Yeah, I don't really know. That would be something to request with all the money we pay them. I mean, not just a few that you send, but everyone else could benefit from that. Well, they are talking about eliminating one of the conferences, the midwinter conference, and making that all virtual conference. And there, are, there is committee work that is now carried out virtually. Um, but yeah, a PLA year it does end up being a bigger year for professional development. There's no question about it. All right, we've got. Um, and, and I think there's, there's professional development, but then there's also, what is it, um, subscriptions or, or um, dues. There's another 8,000. Yes, oh, here, 8,900. I mean, that brings this up to like 63,000. And this is just to go to one event. No, it no. is. The professional development line covers all of the costs of going to any of the conferences. For instance, a number of people went to the uh, conference for support staff in May that's held in Rosemont, and that was $150 a person. But they all went to multiple that's sessions nice. that day and did, had a lot of opportunities to network and came back and wrote up their notes and shared what they learned. So that's included in here. There are a number of things. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in subscription and dues. For $8,900, our staff is allowed to go to PLA. That's, that's it, it. it is no for them to, it is a perk for librarians to join their professional association and great to join the CPA association. So that again is something the board could look at deciding that's not a benefit we're going to provide to the librarian staff anymore. That's up to the board. I wouldn't advocate for it. I think there's a big, uh, I think it's important that staff maintain their professional development and keep up with the field. Okay, we were on page 38, employee fringe benefit. Any questions or comments about that section? I have a question about fringe benefits. Um, I am a ref. Um, the board just recently voted to include um, hospital or no health reimbursement costs into or consider some sort sort of health reimbursements or health payments as earnings. What health costs are we talking about there? So um, we offer insurance. Uh, health insurance to a number of people. It's all full-time people and employees who work uh, more than 30 hours a week on average. Um, we provide a $40 per pay period incentive for those people not to take our insurance. So uh, the, the way that it works is that if a person does take the insurance, it costs the library about $10,000 for single coverage in a given year, the way that rates have been so, uh, most recently. And that's net of their portion. Um, if, uh, if they don't, then we pay them $1,000. And the library saves $9,000. Um, so what the vote, uh, what the resolution passed by the board uh, regarding this did was allowed, or actually I should say formalized, the uh, inclusion of that money into the IMRF calculations. We had all, already been including it, but we were missing this piece of paper, which they like to see in their files that says that the board has voted and recognizes that this is what the library is doing. Okay, two points. Um, I, I looked at the, resol the resolution prior to that one that was just approved, um, like way back in IMRF days, and what was on the resolution was 
monies from like uh, did it say 403? It was described as like I think wherever whatever pension monies our staff had prior to IMRF, they were allowed to use that money. Um, to buy service hours is the way I read the resolution. I didn't see. So anything that's about that's this. different than what you just brought up. Yeah, about I didn't health see insurance. this, and because you said it was in a prior resolution, I didn't see this <coughs> listed in the prior resolution. So, um, so we didn't. It wasn't something that we. Well, we had. We talk, I we, remember we, talking we did about this. this. It was actually in response to the IMRF audit that we uh, uh, underwent, and the auditor said hey, we really need this piece of paper, uh, which we then presented to the board, and the board uh, adopted it. So it was approved by a resolution prior to when we voted for Is that what you're trying to say? And we just I missed the piece of paper? I don't know what the last part of that sentence means. Okay. You said we that this was, um, I said it wasn't on the previous IMRF, the only resolution prior to the one we just approved for this, did not include any verbiage for this. So I was trying to figure out where in the past was this approved? Are you saying at a board meeting? Yeah. So it didn't need a resolution at that time? It was a resolution. I think I couldn't find it. Okay, that's fine. All right, um, so what we're saying is employees, certain employees receive $1,000 per year because it saves us a fortune on insurance. Yes. Do we know if, if this goes into IMR, well, from what I'm hearing, to add any more money into IMRF just compounds what the residents will be paying for their, their benefits. Is it something we really need to do? I mean, considering, you know, the fact that pensions are, our pension hopefully is secure, but with all the issues, how much more do we want to put into the pension fund? Their earnings aren't enough that we needed to add this. I'm just saying, some of the things we do will cost us a fortune for the next 20 years. And I don't know if that's a good use of this. That's up to you. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it will cost us a lot more than a thousand dollars. I don't know for I, years. I, so I don't. I, I don't know what. I don't know what the trailing uh, uh, cost creep looks like. So this to be is, honest with you, I, I just don't know. And right now, what we're doing is putting in earnings. So whatever their weekly earnings are, or pay period earnings, that's what goes into IMRF. And no, this no, that's not true. It gets calculated as part of their salary on uh, the library. Uh, currently is paying 5.31% uh, percent of uh, all eligible earnings. So, uh, and, uh, okay. uh, I can do 10% uh, so would be $4, five, uh, $2 goes, you know, roughly $2 goes into uh, uh, IMRF for that $40 that we pay. Um, and uh, the employee, has 4.5 percent withheld, so, uh, so this you know, a little less of their amount too. Increases their this amount. This increases the amount that comes out of their check. Yes. Yes. As yes, well. Yes. Okay. All right. So it's 1,000 a year, and it's 5.1 percent. Uh, 5.31 percent currently. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying, if little things like this that will make a difference, and and I don't know who it would offend, but it would cert I mean, we have no desire to look at spending in any other way but to increase it. And it's kind of an opposition to being in a budget review process. Okay, that's my only question on that. All right, turning to utilities. I think we have a question about utilities. Uh, what I try to do um, with utilities is price in the uh, intergovern intergovernmental agreement that the board approved. Uh, for you know to reduce the utilities cost uh, by roughly uh, five and a half percent so um, we're still getting utilities the lights are still on uh, but once the uh, new contracts uh, take uh, take effect we should uh, save uh, a little bit of money in order to keep the lights on keep the building warm okay all right all right, let's skip down to uh, the next big section, capital expenditures. Yeah, before we go there, um, I'd like to just uh, highlight something. Oh, sure. Uh, right under utilities is a line called total operating, operating expenses. And these are expenses that the library uh, incurs on a day-to-day -day basis to you know, pay salaries and pay benefits and run programs and 
and all the things that the you know that the library does on a day in day out basis. Last year we budgeted uh, five million eight hundred and thirty one thousand dollars approximately. This year the budgeted number is uh, five million eight hundred and sixty thousand. So an increase of uh, twenty nine thousand uh, dollars overall um, in an environment in an environment where I would expect to see somewhere in the neighborhood of one and a half to three and a half percent increase overall. In accordance with inflation? Yes. All right. Yes. Um, so uh, it's true that the overall budget um, at the bottom line on uh, page 40 has increased a little bit over a million dollars compared to last year. But as Susan pointed out, the vast majority of that increase is related to uh, capital expenditures. Um, for you know, for which we have a, a budget of uh, one million nine hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars. The biggest portion, of course, the roof. All right. So let's turn to a couple of expenditures, and uh, also turn just in terms of budgeting, in terms of last year our budget and what amount we were able to spend, in terms of getting projects going, and where we are this year, and what projects we anticipate this year. Okay, I, um, I have a um, handout for this. Oh. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes, Greg. Didn't we have, uh, doesn't this money come out of the general fund, and wasn't there money slated already for the anticipated expense of the, um, of the group? Here you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, a couple of years, a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the library put in a significant. Wait, I think we're I think we're short one. No, no, they're still yeah. coming. Okay, sorry. All right, Did everyone got one. All right, mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the board decided to fund an amount into the uh, special reserve fund. This was after we had completed uh, the uh, renovation that was uh, that took place in uh, 2013. And uh, in, in those amounts were included estimates for uh, all sorts of things, uh, mostly the mechanicals of the building, uh, things having to do with what we call the envelope of the building, which would be like the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this year we had the roof, I'm sorry, we had the building and the mechanicals re-evaluated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have, a couple of, uh, I have a couple of engineering reports that uh, are basically updates from the uh, ones from four years ago. And uh, that informed our uh, process for uh, developing the budget for uh, the current fiscal year. What I, um, what I handed out is something which takes the capital budget from last year, from 1819, <coughs> and rolls it forward to uh, rolls it forward to uh, uh, the current capital budget. So, for example, if you look at uh, the first line item, it says uh, the common the common ceiling replace ceiling tiles. Um, you know the parts of uh, the grid and the commons and the ceiling tiles uh, are in uh, pretty rough shape and uh, and need to be replaced. I, I think they're over 20 years old. If I'm not mistaken, Dave. Mm -hmm. Um, so we had it on this year's budget, but um, you know some of the some of the activities that we undertook this year took a little more of uh, of our time than we had anticipated. So if you follow that line across, you know the ultimate resolution is that it was transferred to the next year. So we plan on we still plan on doing the ceiling tiles, and there are. Uh, Various items where we have stuff that wasn't started, um, and we have stuff that was started but wasn't completed, or we have um, uh, we've started it in terms of having a, a bid, but we don't have uh, we don't have uh, them on the calendar until after the end of the fiscal year, and that's how this that's how the schedule works. Um, if you uh, think about the chiller, uh, which is, I don't know, about five lines down from the top on the first page, six lines down. Uh, the chiller uh, was 
budgeted for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That was the amount that we had an understanding from our engineering reports uh, in terms of cost um, at the time that it was presented to us, and that was the only intelligence that we had. And then during the year, we uh, went through a bidding process and ended up uh, with a bid, uh, a valid bid, uh, for about $147,000. So that was paid in two increments, $116,000, which was all that was paid to date when I, when I struck this uh, chart. And then the balance of 31160, which is actually a payment that you'll see uh, at the Wednesday uh, board meeting for a total of 147160, if I did the math correctly, which is far less than the 250. Mm -hmm. And then you can see in the in the fourth column, uh, $102,840. So that was basically that unused and we and thought we were going to have to spend, but we didn't actually right. end up having to spend. Correct. And can I just remind everyone, we did not levy for that. That was transferred into the Special Reserve Fund. So, quick question before you go any further. That unused money can be go towards what we need for the roof. Yeah, it basically stays in the fund. Yeah. Uh, I, right now, um, I believe that there is uh, either 1.1 or $1.2 million that's left in the fund. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... You know, um, you know, if we spend everything that we think we're going to spend on the building next year, mm -hmm. um, we'll end up with a little bit, we'll, we'll end up having to transfer monies into that fund in order to cover it. Much? How much are you anticipating? Um, maybe somewhere around a million dollars. Um, if you have $1.1 million and you're planning on spending two, well, that's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's going to be two for approximately for the roof? Uh, uh, 1.2 million for the roof, approximately. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is that there were some other um, items on here. For example, uh, another big project that we did was the caulking, which is right under the uh, chiller. Um, we were using a budget number of $40,000, but it came in on the bidding at $106,000. Mm. You know, if you remember, we had five or six. Uh, you know, bidders. We had one real low one that was pretty close to 40, but but they had uh, they just didn't have a valid bid. You know, they did not include like half the building in it. So in that case, we actually um, in the in the fourth column spent an additional sixty six thousand dollars over over the budget, and we talked about it at the time. But mm -hmm. so, so how, how big of a percentage are we off in our estimates of our cost? Because I know when I run projects, we were always uh, required to come in with it within plus or, or minus five percent on our project. Well, once we have bids, we're pretty much right on. But but you're saying that we're, we're coming out with one hundred two thousand eight hundred forty dollars on one, eighty three thousand two hundred sixty on another. Where we really, you know, we kind of thought it was going to cost this, but we, you know, it's it's coming in eighty three thousand less, one hundred two thousand less, right? Is that am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So uh, uh, with respect to the you know, with respect to the bathrooms, um, we had that 108,000 anticipated uh, redoing the third floor bathrooms, including uh, carving out and making a, um, I forget what it's called, this, a single stall, um, gender neutral, gender, gender neutral um, bathroom. And um, uh, we did not do this or include it in the, uh, in the budget for next year. So in, in that particular item, there was a little bit of a scope change where we just ended up uh, redoing the kids' bathrooms downstairs for just under $25,000. Um, you know, Dennis, on, on the other ones, I mean, a lot of these costs are generated by um, engineers or, you know, they kind of look at it and they say, yeah, I think you can do that for $250,000, but until we actually get out and, and end the bids and so forth, um, you know, we um, we don't know. Okay. You know, uh, this coming year is, the roof is uh, $1.2 million, but I can't tell you, um, I can't tell you that it won't be 850 or mm -hmm. 1.4, yep. you know. Yep. It all depends on, you know, when they get up there and, and they start uh, identifying the areas that are, you know, really in need compared to the ones that are in pretty good shape and 
determining what they have to do to the substrata, um, that's kind of where uh, the rubber, if you will, hits the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. And seriously, if an engineer, I would think that would be your best estimate of until you do the first. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't know that, I mean, I think it's obvious that they don't approach it with the same rigor as, you know, as we like them to, or as, as if they're going, as, as if the business depends on it. I will tell you that um, Dave spends a, a good amount of time, you know, checking some of these things with, you know, some of the, uh, some of his peers at other buildings and so forth. And, you know, boils down to you know how much a square foot. You know, you just did a, a roof. How much did you spend per square foot? And yeah, I know someone very well comparable to our, our maintenance guy here, and I, I know it's a difficult task. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. I know uh, how recommendations are made and how things go on. So, yeah. uh, and it's a I type of roofing too. This is a flat roof, which is more uh, involved. Yeah. Plus, they don't have the life expectancy of a different type of roof either. Yeah, I, went, once I, I used to have one. What's our warranty day? 20 years. 20 years. Well, that's pretty good because I was lucky. I even I didn't even think I got 10 out of mine when I had every done. Of course, everything Dave buys now, nowadays uh, has a lifetime warranty to it. <laughs> So anyway, this is um, you know this is the list of projects. You know we have a couple of uh, larger ones. Uh, the, you know the, the biggest one for the building being um, the roof. being the roof. If you turn the page um, for equipment, this is you know generally. Uh, where we see a lot of the IT dollars spent. Um, you know, the, um, I'd say for the most part that, you know, we tend to be a lot closer uh, with the exception of E-rate. Um, you know, when, uh, when Rich is looking at a project and he says, I think I have to uh, replace my switches, you know, he calls up CDWG, which provides our equipment and our pricing under the, uh, of various contracts, they, uh, well, this, this, the, you know, the state pre bid uh, mm -hmm. contract, which I can't remember the name of. That's uh, right. And you know, and we get pretty close. You yeah. know, the, the wild card, of course, is if you look at the actually the, the switches. Um, you know, the wild card is whether or not E rate will will have the funding to to pay for a significant portion. And this year they did, which saved us roughly thirty four thousand dollars. Yeah, so that's why you see the difference there. So, uh, in terms of uh, projects for um, you know for next year, we're going to um, from the top we're going to do the uh, door security systems, which if you remember the, the cameras were the first step, and then the doors mm -hmm. were to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do the uh, it's time to replace the phone system. Mm -hmm. You know, the phone is is the phone system is. Uh, Really on its last legs. It's hard. It's hard for us to find parts, but I don't know where you're finding them, Rich. Um, <laughs> Magic. Um, the panels and the uh, digital sign uh, need replacement. This is not to upgrade the color. This is. Um, what are we looking at? Ten year old. Uh, uh, the backboard yeah, is the back over ten years old. Yeah. And so they plug in new little panels yeah. into the backboard, but the backboard is ten years old. So it's. It's time to replace it. So you know. So we we had talked about the sign out in front. Well, we had now. talked we had talked about a fifty thousand dollar all uh, all color replacement. This is just to maintain maintain it because what it, what's happening is we have these uh, small panels about this big, you know, this yeah. square. I, I think there's sixteen of them. Yeah. We're uh -huh. plopping them in and they're burning out. Yeah. Because the back plane is chewing them up. So, you know, we need to uh, replace the foundational stuff. Um, the uh, copiers, uh, the staff copiers are over eight years old and uh, certainly at the end of their uh, service lives. Um, we have a server project on the books for about $155,000.
Um, we have $26,000 to pay for uh, the uh, various uh, maintenance that goes along with the uh, automated materials handler or the sorter yes. downstairs. So um, that's actually that's actually a um, a commitment that's about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and twenty six thousand is if we pay it on an annual basis. Uh, when we bought it, we did pay five years in advance, and um, that time's coming up. Yeah, at, at the end of at the end of December, um, or at the end of this uh, calendar year is uh, is when it turns. So that's when you'll have to pay them up. The 26, 26. right. Um, we have uh, self-checks. Um, those are, you know, the uh, machines downstairs that, what are, are they running XP or 7? They're running Windows 7. They're running <coughs> Windows 7, so they have to be upgraded. Uh, we can't put 10 on them mm -hmm. because they won't warranty anything with 10 on them. Uh, they will warranty those with if we try to uh, uh, put 10 on them. So um, we're looking at an equipment upgrade there. Um, and then we have uh, <coughs> then we have uh, some um, UPS replacements for uh, $47,000. This is you know the network switches and, and the servers and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's not the little ones that sit under everybody's desk. It's the biggest. So. Hmm. Well, those self checks uh, then makes a big difference, even as far as the uh, amount of employees needed, because a lot of people use those. Yeah, last time I looked at statistics, I think we were running um, between 70 and 80 percent usage. So, in terms of our checkouts, you know, for seven to eight people out of ten actually go to the self checks. I know I do usually. The ones who don't. You know, generally they have some sort of issue. They've reached some sort of limit. You know, they want to take out one more DVD over the limit, or uh, or something like that. And they um, so they need to actually talk to uh, to a person. Yeah, it's a great breakout on, on statistics. It tells the story. Fully understand uh, the need. Uh, uh, this is a uh, hundred times over what I would run in my house. Uh, on, uh, but uh, I coming in, in, a, in an area of working in the technology area for 40 years, I fully understand the need to uh, do those upgrades. Uh, fully expect them to be there, uh, and I fully expect to keep us high and dry with a nice rough cotton walls, so on and so forth. But therein lies the piece that as it becomes part of the total budget. You have to say, am I going to Disney this year because I have to do a new roof? Uh, I use that and I throw that at a, as an example. So just as we talk about, you know, the $30 thing, you know, so we can compare it, you know, uh, make comparisons. I, I make that as my comparison that, uh, you know, I too need to make technology upgrades within my house. I need to keep us high and dry a roof. I need to do all the other stuff. But it's the other things that I can do with the money that I have budgeted. We know an external uh, additional revenue to come in. Uh, you know, so uh, I therefore would cut back is I think any business would. So uh, just as I do things in compare for my house, there's many businesses out there as well that would do the same thing. So again. That's my my thought process. You know, uh, can we can we cut you know people from? Uh, last I heard, we had a marketing department of, of four. Uh, it's a great marketing department. This is this is one heck of a, 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 a newsletter. It's actually three and a half IPs. Three and a half, four. Well, you said that the <coughs> small things are not. They do it so. Uh, yeah, when I when I talk about a library, I, I'm not quite sure. Yes, they, thank they, you they, again. And, and they do fabulous work. Again, uh, I I've seen your work; it's terrific. So I don't complain about the people and the effort that goes into it. 
It's just that how much do we, do we need to do podcasts? You know, you know. So there's there's things we're over we're over marketing. We have a beautiful sign up front, and there's talk about putting signage out in the parking lot. So it's just like we we tend to over market. We I asked, can we keep it to four? And, and we decided to expand it to go to six. So it's this constant expansion that I look to, to cut back on. Now, does it mean that you have to cut back from three and a half? Uh, no, but maybe you make some cuts somewhere else. I, I, I throw these things out as examples only. And, and, and I truly understand the great work that's done here. Thank you for this, Greg. Yeah. Well, I really do. I just I I, I, I look at it to try to find some place where there can be cut. But great report. Uh, uh, what are we on now? Well, we we are just a uh, uh, capital expenditures, and we've just got this detailed capital plan rolling forward. Uh, so thank you for presenting this, and going over it. Um, so, um, unless there's any, any questions about this or capital expenditures, I think uh, then we'll move on to the next item. And the next items I would take as a group, this is on the bottom of page 39, they're all uh, relatively small items, audit, liability insurance, social security, workers' camp, unemployment compensation, and building and equipment maintenance. And these are all part of our um, Special revenue funds. Are, are these? Questions? Yes. Are these not things that really the audit is something we need done every year? Yeah. The <coughs> insurance we need. Yeah. The social security we have no choice. Right. Workers' comp, unemployment. We, those are things we have no choice, isn't it? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just in case anyone has any questions. Uh, I do want to point out that yes. for the life of liability insurance and the workers' compensation insurance. Um, I don't have final numbers on those. Okay. Uh, but I don't expect them to be uh, that different. Okay. So those are uh, estimates. Uh, Social Security is a calculated number. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, audit expenses related to the contract with uh, uh, Lauderback and Amon. And um, Unemployment compensation is uh, statutory, and that's about what our rate is dictating about twenty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So I think um, our audit is one uh, one example of um, an item where during the course of the year we discussed at a different board meeting a way that we could save cost, uh, and we actually were able to save substantially by say switching to a different audit company. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why we can't at various meetings throughout the course of the year. Bring up various areas, the employee compensation or water or whatever, where we think we want to discuss a way in which we might save costs in some way. There's nothing that prohibits us from doing that. Yeah, as our, we our, have done in the past. Our purpose for switching was primarily because we had used the same auditor for That so was the many, initial uh, that reason. Was a, yes, that was a but we did also yeah. save money. Yeah, we the, the end result, luckily, was that we saved money, but the driver behind was not, a, 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 the intention wasn't to say, oh, let's see what we can say. Uh, it, it, the intention was, we really should switch, and I, it was, make, it was a, a great it's decision. A uh -huh. Yeah, it was a great decision. All right, so unless there's any other questions regarding uh, this tentative budget, uh, what I'm going to ask is for a motion to adapt Ordinance 19-01. Excuse me, I have a couple is, of questions. Uh, um, all right, what are your questions? Um, in terms of capital plan, there was, I just had one um, one thing caught my eye. The veterans benches out in front of the library when you walk in are pretty worn and definitely in need of like refinishing. Is that a project done by a? a uh, Boy Scouts. Yeah, we had it was an Eagle Scout. It was an Eagle Scout project. Okay, that's uh, what, I was thinking. what was it? Dave, three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. So. So do we? Do we solicit another Eagle Scouts group, or how, how do we go about we have preparing that? When Neil comes back, because I think Neil O'Shea was the one that was the, the contributor there. Okay. For the names of that. 
Okay. When he comes back from London, he's in London. Oh, yeah, so. oh yeah. I thought maybe he was coming back to work for us <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, didn't he? Okay, that's yeah. good okay. to know. All right. All right, and then I had one question about um, programming. Um, I know I asked last year for the um, supervisors break down other programs for the like the prior year to see where they're faring and um, I believe I was told Cindy Rademacher was busy because we had that major um, computer switch over so that information wasn't available but I'd like to request the program data for our programs for 2018-19 for um, our current year so I could review that because we have no idea what's going on with our programs and we sort of dismiss it. I don't understand really what all it costs to um, provide a program. You know, I'm aware of entertainment and, and a few things. Um, then another key item in, I guess, programming is hospitality. I think that's where that focus is. I don't know that hospitality is used for much other items, other things, other than when we have different programs. So that's another um, cost that I'd like to see how we're uh, handling. So I think right now you're kind of dumping it into programming. Is that what you, you said? I do not consider it to be dumping. I consider it to be the appropriate place for if Dodi is running a senior coffee hour and she makes coffee and she buys cheap cookies for the seniors, that gets paid out of the costs for senior programming. If we have a meeting of a group here at the library, like the CCS Governing Board where 25 library directors came to the library and we gave them breakfast, that came out of the professional development line, which is where we put any associated meeting costs. Oh, so I was under the impression there were only three areas of programming, adult, kids, and teen. But each of the other areas also has their own budget for their events. Is that what you're saying? That's where all that goes like that? Dodi wouldn't Dodi is part of she's outreach. That. So her senior Dodi is the head of adult and outreach services. She does the senior programming and that comes out of adult programming. Okay, so it's adult, kids and teen. Yes. I was wondering could yeah, I there's could, a programming line could I get for um, events. this um, what is it called? Um, the program data for these three areas for this current year, or at least up to today, so I could um, review it. I don't have anything in a form that would be appropriate for you to review. Don't that. you have a spreadsheet that... I um, do not have a spreadsheet that has all of the data that you are looking for. No. What, what is Cindy currently compiling for us? Cindy is not compiling anything for you. She does compile some things for me. Us, the library. Not me personally. I didn't mean that. So she, I, I thought she was given the um, the project to... Um, I changed that. She's not doing that anymore. So no one has um, any records of their program? You get in every board report the costs of everything and the attendance of every program that is going to You get that every single month. That's not what you need to realize how a program is run. But it, it says here in your strategic plan that you're going to review three years of program data in developing programs That's for 2019-20. What data will you be reviewing? The data I just mentioned. Which is? The attendance of all of the programs and the the expenditures, you know, the cost of the performers. You have the that all by program? I do not have that all in form that I can give to you now. I will be working on that as part of the strategic plan. So to date, we do not compile this information to determine the outcomes of our programs. Is that what you're saying? That is, the outcome of the program might be that somebody learned a new skill. No, I meant or cost, life resident was attendance. Changed. No, I meant outcomes in terms of, we're talking about a budget. You're just talking about money. I get it. Costs. Yes. Yes, absolutely. $300 for entertainment and only five people showed up. Maybe, like I said in the past, if that's 
happening if we discuss it, we may want to reschedule it, or we may it's not include not require board input for that. We discuss that internally. Okay, the costs for these programs need to be reviewed at some level. We don't review them. I'm asking whatever it is you review, I would like to see. So I would feel much better when it comes to agreeing with, you know, thousands of dollars for programs. What would the rest of the board like? I think that's something that we should discuss at our next meeting in terms of documentation going forward. Uh, again, tonight, really, we're just focusing on the budget. We're trying to focus on the budget. With no data to substantiate the cost. I think we, we have, have the, the total cost. Exactly. So that's all. That's we have. What we have but that's not how you review a budget. We don't have to micromanage. Every it's not called micromanaging. It's that's called, exactly what it's called. You know, you need to get a little more exactly. involved with other budget processes, no, you don't need so you to can tell understand me what I need better. to do. You need. Then to you won't use the word micromanage. You don't say you. All right. Well, so you won't use that word. All right, I think what we need to do is turn our attention back to the agenda. Um, do I now hear a motion to adopt Ordinance 19-01, a tentative ordinance providing for the budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library for County, Illinois for the fiscal year beginning July 1 and at July 1, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2020. Uh, if we can just get a motion on the table. So we can discuss it, yeah. yes. Okay. I'll motion sure. a second. Uh, did you make a second? Uh, was that yeah, that, okay. All right, thanks. Uh, I just want to point out what this is. Of course, it's a tentative ordinance and what this means. Uh, if it's passed, this is what uh, will be published to the newspaper. Am I correct? Um, I believe, do we publish? The, we don't think we publish the whole thing, but I think it's available on the website. Oh, okay. We publish it's the, the notice, notice of the hearing. Notice. Right. Notice the hearing. It's available. It's okay. available. Okay. It's and available. It, it tells the public that this is the, this is how you can look at our budget. This is what we expect to pass, but it gives them 30 days notice. And um, then at the next board meeting, mm -hmm. we would have a public hearing on the budget uh, before the regular board meeting. That would be, uh, again, if it passed tonight, that would be in June. So what this is, is not the final budget, but a tentative budget. And it's the one that would go on the website that the public could look at. So that's, that's just, again, to keep in mind, that's what we're looking at. Yes, Patty. Okay, since we're discussing it now, yes. uh, my question, again, is pertaining to the roof. Now, did, what, that was added into this new thing? I'm sorry, what, your, what, what was our, the roof, roof? The price for the roof. Yeah. Yeah. That was this, added in here. How much was added to, to the budget you know, to cover it? So here's, here's an easy way to and, do it, to do it Patty. Um, if you take a look at uh, page, uh, no, not that. Uh, if you take a look at page 40. 40, okay, I'll go back to 40. I just want to verify I understand because that's kind of a good thing. Okay, so if you take a look at page 40, mm -hmm. um, the line that says total expenditures, the third column from the left, mm -hmm. is 8416671. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the end of... Yeah, you have one million something there. Oh, hang yeah. uh, on. If, if you go now to the uh, end of the ordinance, 1901, on page 50. Page 50, okay, hang on. So the grand total in the lower right-hand corner is the same number, 8,416,671. Okay. So everything that you saw in the... Um, in the budget that we uh, page through and discuss is included in the uh, in the ordinance. We haven't gotten any bids sure. yet. Basically, what we're going on is according to what a architect suggested the price would be. Uh, you know, more correct? like uh, engineers and construction managers engineers? that uh, we've taken the, okay. you know that we've had walk around. But it's no. No, it's not. Contract. It's not a solid number. Not okay. by a, a long shot. Okay. Yeah. And until we actually go to bed and, and solicit all that information, we won't. When are we anticipating doing that? Um, I, I really haven't talked to Dave about timing, but you know, I, uh, my guess is probably next week. Okay. After the rest. Okay. Right. So we approve the money. Yeah. We get the money now in place, and then we do it next year. After. Well, it, yeah, it, it'll 
it'll more than likely be, you know, uh, the straddle the ending here, is my guess. You know, so, you know, in, re in rather short fashion, maybe uh, you know, toward the fall, if the fall is exceptional. Yeah. yeah. But we should get the bids out. Um, okay. I just have a quick question. I, I think I'm just looking at page 42 and 48, and it looks like the same ordinance, only the second one doesn't have the word draft written across it. Is that the only change there? I think it's yeah. just in the book twice. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so I put a package together, uh, which as part of it is I includes see. the uh, kind of ordinance. So. I Okay. Uh, I have something to say. On page 45, yes. Yes. Uh, am I reading the wrong thing that the bottom of the page has the wrong date? Uh, sorry about that. Or Karen Diamond's signature is as May 2018. Um, oh, you're right in the, yeah. the, 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 the attestation clause. Right? Yeah. That's a good guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, I see that. That's why you're yeah, yeah, up here it says 19, down here it says 18. Yeah. 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 And then that's also on page 51, the same thing. Yeah. 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 So that needs to be changed. Okay. It says uh, attested and signed in my office. Oh, no, of course, you can get you. That's right. It's in next year's budget. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions on the budget as a whole? I, I had a question before yes. I move on about passport applications. Um, I know Susan, you sent me the information regarding our the applications for the last couple of months. Thank you. Um, I probably wasn't as clear in my email as I should have been. What I was wondering is, um, is there a charge to? I guess we mail them. I gather that because it's hand carried. I guess to the library, fiber mail. Do we pay? Do we pay the cross the mailing of that, or does the government pay? Do we have some we kind pay. of labels? We oh, we do. So, and do we just it regular mail overnight? I mean, do, are we required to do it a certain way? I know um, it's every. You say it's the next day. Priority. It's uh, prior priority mail. Okay, and then what are the hours for passport application? Uh, well, it's on the website, but I'll take the best guess. Okay. It's, Is it all day? No, it, well, it's, it starts at uh, 10 a.m. and uh, goes until uh, two hours before closing, Monday through Friday. On, uh, on Saturday, it's 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. And on Sunday, it's... Uh, oh, thank you, Tim. You get my cash mark? I'm getting out of town. Okay. <laughs> Sunday is, I'm sorry, one to three? Uh, yeah, I think something like that. Something like that. Is it there? Yeah. It's on there. Yeah. All right, thank you. I wrote this thing, too. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, one to four. Okay, thanks. All right, Sunday is one to four? All right, anything else? Um, and so, uh, yeah. I know I can find it somewhere, but I'm just going to ask because it's going to take you a lot quicker just to let me know. Okay, so um, talking about the roof again because that's such a big expenditure. That coming out of our special reserve. Reserve. Yeah. Okay, so that's money that we've already saved. Uh, in part, we're going to have to make the transfer. It was about 1.1 million dollars in the special reserve. The full capital plan is about that's two million dollars. Okay. So okay. All right. Okay. okay. So I just was trying to wrap right. my head around it. All right. So in part, we're, we already have saved. Yeah. One point. We have one point one million dollars. Okay. So and where are you getting? I think she's trying to get to where are you getting the other million dollars? So from the general. Saving from, from the general. So yeah, we the saved part of it, but we still need to mm -hmm. um, get more. Okay, I just want to figure it out what we have. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. And how much does that leave in the general fund? Well, zero. Still oh, in the general fund. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, May I have roughly. your attention, please? Roughly. The library will be I'm closing in 15 <laughs> minutes. I, you know, uh, Dennis. Don't worry about it. Yeah. See, here's the next time. Yeah, well, here's, here's, here's the situation. 
um, we have money in the general fund, but I don't. Uh, the library does not have money coming in until August, so it's got to cover May expenses. It's got to cover um, June expenses, July. So it has so the money coming in is coming from where? Well, the, like from the uh, from the county, from the tax collection, so primarily. Yes. Okay. So we already have all our taxes. Um, you know, for this fiscal for year, this part, for the first so part. our balances are a little bit high, and they're going to come down uh, about a million five to two million dollars over the next three months. Yeah. So. Got it. That's yeah. fine. And by the time you do, you know, so it's hard to talk about, you know, like what's truly a reserve. I mean, you know, if you have your cash, I, it's I ten point six or yeah. something no, like that. Can I just ask a question as well? <clears throat> In terms of cash on hand. Would that um, protect us in case we need more money, as opposed to needing to increase the levy at some point? I mean, this is almost two million dollars. Yeah. And we're a little shy, but is so, that cash on hand, or is that just assets? No, it's cash and investments. Okay. So there's you know, uh, treasury bills and uh, treasury notes, um, certificates of deposits, uh, primarily. They have comprise the, uh, the amount of money that we have in. We have some money, we try to keep regular cash because it doesn't yield anything as low well as we possibly can. Right. Uh, and then keep everything else invested so that we get some sort of return. But if you needed to pull from that, are they available? Like are, are those treasury bills or bonds available? Yeah. They are. Yeah, okay. well you can sell anything at any point. They're all on the secondary market. Right. You know, the question is, is, you know, you have to do the thing effectively enough so you can do that. But, yeah. just, but my point is, instead of needing to raise the levy, we have 10 million to fall back on. Well, they're reserves. Yeah. I mean, I just you know, want to make sure they're available to us. You know, one of the, you know, one of the interesting things when I got there, um, I think we had, the library had about $14 million or, or thereabouts. And they were in the midst of a uh, large renovation project. Um, you know, what, the good news was, besides getting a great library, a uh, great looking library out of the uh, renovation, is that the library did not have to go to the market and borrow the money and go, uh, go through a bonding exercise. Um, yeah, I think that's, you know, I think that's uh, terrific in a lot of respects. It's, you know, basically, as you were saying, Dennis, you know, pay for what you can afford. You know, so when you look down the road, you know, if you're doing a renovation every 15 to 20 years, you know, the race is a question, what should you be putting in the special reserve for future renovations in order to, in order to guard against having to go out to uh, the public in the form of a bond issue to uh, finance further, you know, further significant changes to the library. So just, you know, just okay. keep the thought. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, did you have something else? Or? Yeah. So, okay. So I have the special reserve. We have over a million. We're going to use that. That's going to be zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have the um, the regular general fund, and we're going to use the rest of the money from there. Mm -hmm. So then. And and the money from the general fund is coming from the the taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's it's, it's uh, all reserves that you've been left over from prior years. Yeah. Um, then. Uh, when do we then push money from our general fund back into the special? When do we decide uh, I think what it, we want to then I think push when, back I think when we have a much clearer picture uh, in terms of what these costs for, like the roof, you know, mm -hmm. because really that's the long term. Um, when we look at what that's actually going to cost and we get some hard numbers on that. It's just like all the other projects. Yeah. So, uh, so you're, okay. Greg, are you saying we'll, we'll need to transfer money yes. to the Special Reserve when yes. we know the dollar amount a little bit better? Yes. So okay. more so like you're saying in the spring when you get estimates? Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll probably start getting estimates pretty soon. Okay. So, it'll be less so does the final payment have to come out of Special Reserve? Not necessarily, right? So, you know... Um, I'm just confused about... We have I know to that we put money away so that it's spent there and yeah. it's all we can spend it on. I get that. So we have one checking account. Okay, and we have one investment account. And all the divisions between the funds are done basically on paper. Okay, so in the books we have separate entities that are called funds. And right now, out of that 
checking account, we have $1.1 million that's allocated to special reserve. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that money, um, you know, when, let's say that we don't, that the board doesn't transfer any monies until after all the bills have paid, have been paid and all the smoke is cleared, then those bills will still get paid. Because they'll get paid really out of the, uh, general fund? Out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. And then the special reserve fund will be owed by the general fund. Uh, certain amounts of money. Okay, in order to in order to cover that. Okay. And then at that point we can make the transfer. Well we can you know actually we can make the transfer anything. Right. I just kinda like to know what we're doing first. Right, and not have it stuck there mm -hmm. if we don't possibly need it mm -hmm. in that spot. I understand. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. So um, we have a motion on the table. Can we have a roll call? Certainly, we'll run to that time. Patty? Uh, this is yes. to pass the tender budget. Right? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Um, no. You know, without um, any data or breakdown of last year's costs to evaluate where we should be headed and without any costs associated with this year's spending, I have to go no again. Dennis? No. Diane? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, as I look back to our agenda, I do see uh, and others or anything else that anyone wants to discuss right now. Not, I'll have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion.